grace and peace to you and happy new year on this first Sunday of 2023. Many of you are still trickling in to find your places. Make sure that you have taken those elements to have communion, our ushers. Mark, we need some in the choir, if you don't mind coming up here and doing that. While we welcome everyone, and the ushers will give you a chance to register attendance here shortly. Uh, thank you all for being here and making this a, a, a part of your beginning service experience in this Christian year. Uh, I invite everybody that's out in the, the uh, narthex to come join us for worship. Uh, and, and those of you who are at home uh, watching on Facebook Live, we welcome you and invite you to uh, send us a message in the chat room so that we can register your attendance. Um, there uh, will be a gathering here on Wednesday afternoon for as many of you who can come and help. This sanctuary has been most beautiful during the Advent and Christmas season, um, but we have to put it back where it belongs. And uh, the choir is going to be here. Uh, we've invited them to come, but I'm going to be cooking a big pot of soup. Uh, and if you could get here five-ish on Wednesday afternoon, there'll be something for everybody to do, okay? Now, we're going to have Sean Evans and I had practice up there decorating that tree. Um, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna need some help with that as well. Uh, Jason helped us put it together. Well, Linda's son and uh, has bags for it. But we're gonna need some help. And as you see, there are a lot of little details as well. Uh, I'm sure that some of you have had fun taking their Christmas decorations at your house. Uh, the gills are just like that. We still have some some to do. But we're delighted you're here, and we're grateful. This service today. Uh, it is a uniquely United Methodist. It's uniquely Wesleyan. This is the Wesley Covenant service. And if you've never experienced it, the words are very uh, challenging. Let me just say that right, up, right off the bat. We will be sharing and reading together when, the, when that time comes. Um, and then Amber Lee will be leading us through the first part of it and then I will conclude and then we will share in Holy Communion together. We decided to use the small implements of, of bread and wine at your seat today, just hoping and making sure that we kind of keep things safe because COVID has been rampant of late and so has the flu. So that's that's our choice. It would be it would I would prefer to do it the normal way, but uh, maybe next month we can do that. We invite you to quiet your hearts for just a moment as Debbie plays our music and then we'll begin with a call to worship. Debbie's playing the tune to the hymn that we're going to be singing in just a second. So Matthew, if you'll come and lead us, if you'll stand and join us as we sing this hymn about God's grace. Shall we stand? <clears throat> i 
Will you please join me in our opening prayer? O oh God, searcher of our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now let us turn around and greet one another in Jesus' name. Let us stand and give thanks for all God's mercies. O oh God, our covenant friend, you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. We pray Praise you. Holy name, God. you have given us life and reason. You have set in us a world filled with your glory. You have comforted us with family and friends and ministered to us through the hands of our sisters and brothers. We praise your holy name, God. You have filled our hearts with a hunger after you and have given us your peace. You have redeemed us and called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have given us a place in the fellowship of your spirit and the witness of your church. You have been our light in darkness and a rock of strength in adversity and temptation. You have the very spirit of joy in our joys and the all-sufficient reward in all our labors. We praise your holy name. You remembered us when we forgot you. You followed us even when we tried to flee from you. You met us with forgiveness when we returned to you for all your patience and overflowing grace. We praise your holy name, God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now let us continue our worship with the giving of God's tithes and our offerings.
you may be seated. In the third chapter of the book of the Ecclesi- Ecclesiastes, after those verses that talk about time, this is what follows. What gain have the workers from their toil? I've seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy. He's made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in their toil. I know I know whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this, so that all should stand in awe before him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I have a question for you. Would anybody in the room or at home like to have a do-over for something in 2022? Y'all know what do-overs are? You ever played ball and you, somebody tells, I need a do-over. It's kind of like a mulligan in golf, for those of you who play golf. Anybody like me who... Uh, didn't listen one day uh, to my beloved, and it came back on me. <laughs> Imagine that. Or perhaps children heard what they wanted to hear about curfews, like we have that at my house sometimes. My hunch is that all of us would like to have a do-over some, at some, around something this past year. I'm glad for grace, aren't you? Was there a moment this past year that you would love to relive? I know this is as shallow as the baby into the pool, but I would. And I confessed, I wish I could have been at the College World Series this past June. Some of you have been there when your team played and won. Some of our friends in Tupelo were able to go but my family the timing of everything was not very good we really wrestled with it my boys really wanted to go but I did get to hear David Kellum say for the first time ever Ole Miss National Champions College Baseball and if you know David's career it's long like Mr. Uh, Jack Crystals was, uh, he got to say that, and I thought that was cool, and yes, I would like to relive that moment. But what do you hope for as we turn the page in 2023? What time is it in your life's story? The writer of of Ecclesiastes speaks about how God had set things into motion and that all of our time was to be meaningful and that it was a gift from God, and that we should enjoy the life we live. What time is is it in your life story right now? I look in the room, and we have people in this room who span the lifespan from from the first, they're in their first 10 years of their life, and some are in their ninth decade. We cover a big span. We're about to, we're waiting on pins and needles in the Gill family to hear that our, my nephew, who is Nathan Powell, who's married to Margaret Bernheim, they're expecting their first child, and my sister Angie is about to be a grandmother for the first time, and she had a back issue. She had to go to the ER yesterday, and she, but she was going to do something so that if they got that phone call, she could go to New Orleans to be with her with that baby. My daddy is 89. 
So my family spans that same kind of depth and breadth of time. Many of us have seen lots of New Year's come and go. But doctor's appointments and retirement routines are how many of us spend our days. And the rest of us are trying to balance family and all that that means and our careers, hoping that our kids will make the most of the opportunities that they have to prepare themselves for adulthood. I'm thrilled about how you've made a new person in our life welcomed. I had some, not anxiety, but change is difficult. And last July, we had a change in status of our pastors. And there were people curious, as we all are. But how wonderful it has been to have Amber Lee and Andrew become part of our church family and ministry and how you have responded to her and to he and and how she's brought such meaning. And then who would have thought? Matt meets Maggie. I mean, come on. And now they're going to get married. Well, I pray that as we turn the corner into 2023, that God will help us see ways to meet and engage this community we live in all across Lee County but especially in Joiner to rekindle and to have a desire to meet more people in this neighborhood and find creative ways to do that I had one of the most unusual requests in my 37 years of ministry this week I was walking down the hallway to the coffee shop and this young man walks in very briskly I thought how did you get in here because this door was locked and then I remembered the coffee shop door was open. He said, uh, he, he said, could I speak to you? He was about 25, 28 maybe, a uh, handsome young man, and he was full of vim and vigor, and we sat down in my office for a second, and he said, I have called the Mississippi State Alumni uh, Office, and I have worked it out that I'm going to get to shoot a basketball from half court at halftime tonight. He said, I haven't played basketball in a long time. He said, I haven't shot a basketball in a long time, but I I remembered that your church has a gymnasium. Do you mind if I go in there and shoot some basketballs? I said, of course not. And so we walked all the way down. We actually walked out into the parking lot. His lovely wife was sitting out there in the car, and they told me what they did. He uh, is a photographer professional photographer and she is a graphic design artist and they met at Mississippi State and I told them about my sister who graduated in the first class of 1982 of the graduate uh, of the graphic design uh, school there at Mississippi State and we went inside and um, he started shooting baskets from half court he hit the goal about one every five or six times now it's that's a that's a I don't know if any of you have ever shot the ball from half court on purpose or even for fun. But it was a moment. It was a moment that they knew, even though it was self-serving for them, they showed up here. And I got a, I got a chance to be a neighbor, if you will. Got a chance to be a neighbor. And I said to them, yes, shamelessly, not shamelessly, on purpose. I says, by the way, Sundays at 1030, we have worship. And we, we would welcome you to come as you are. I hope we have some ways to be neighbors in Joiner and in Tupelo this year. There are people hungry to be loved and accepted. They may not all look like us, dress as nice as we are, live in the best neighborhoods like all of us do, but they're, they're children of God. And we, 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 we have the opportunity to be the hands and feet 
and to open the door and offer the fellowship of Christ. It's better than what the world offers. It's not as glamorous, but it lasts a long time. And it never wears out when it's authentically experienced. I pray as we move forward that God will give us those kinds of opportunities to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we've entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live more no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm our baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table, as we will do today, and we will renew our baptismal covenants next week. We meet as the generations before us have met to renew this covenant that binds us to God. May we make this covenant of God our own. We invite you to follow along on the screen and respond in the bold print when it is your time to respond. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable, others more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests, others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Therefore, let us go to Christ and pray. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and your work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these. First, church first, Set apart some time, more than once, to spend alone before the Lord, seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you, and carefully thinking through all the conditions of this covenant and searching your hearts, whether you have already freely given your life to Christ. Consider 
what your sins are. Consider the laws of Christ. How holy, strict, and spiritual they are. And whether you, after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength. So you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. You have opened your mouths to the Lord. And you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never Go back. And last, be prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall down on your knees, lift your hands toward heaven, open your hearts to the Lord as we pray. Join me together as we pray. O righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you shall put away all your idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart, renounce them all, covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch all temptations that will lead me away from you. For my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be your God again, if you will let him. Before all heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body, and soul as your servant, to serve in your holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means of coming to God. Jesus, I do here on bended knee accept Christ as the only new and living way and sincerely join myself in a covenant with him. O oh, blessed Jesus, I come to you hungry, sinful, miserable, blind, and naked, unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants. I do here with all my power accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own unworthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only God. I renounce my own will and take you for as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. 
I do hear covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Through your grace I promise that neither life nor death shall part me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I do here willingly put my neck under your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life in accordance to your direction and not allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty knows and searches your heart. O oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without guile or reservation. If any fault should, should be in it, guide me and help me to set it aright. And now, glory be to you, O God the Father, whom I from this day forward shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory be to you, O God the Son, who have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood, and now is my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. Almighty God, the Lord Omnipotent Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend. And through, through your infinite grace, I have become your covenant servant. So be it, and let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. We'll sing now this verse that we sang previously in worship. please join me in the great thanksgiving. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess that we have not loved you with, with our whole heart. heart. We, we have failed to be an obedient, obedient church. church. We, we have, have not done your will. will. We have, we have broken, broken your law, we have, we have rebelled, rebelled against, against your love, we have, we have not loved our neighbors, neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, free us for joyful obedience, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, 
and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today we are going to be partaking in Holy Communion with um, these prepackaged elements. If you do not have prepackaged elements and you would like them, if you could raise your hand now, an usher can bring them to you. There is a wafer at the bottom or on top, depending on which elements you got, and juice at the front, at the top. This is not a United Methodist Church table. This is not St. Luke United Methodist Church's table. This is the Lord's table, and the Lord welcomes all. This is the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue me in. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow, heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow, God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You are now invited to stand as we sing our closing hymn. I would also invite you, if you this is the place that you want to make your church home, we would love that. 
also, the altar is going to be open during this hymn. I think that this service invites us to a place where we can come and kneel before God. And I don't know if the altar is a better place to start the new year. So as they sing our closing hymn, you're invited to come. Now may the grace and peace of the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, abide with us and send us forth with hope and courage and love. Amen.